All right, YouTube, I want to talk about something that's uh, really real for me these days as I um, next month embark on a life changing event, BSG. Um, something I'm dealing with right now is that I feel like I'm not having really go too deep into it, but I feel like what's the word they use? Um, like food funerals food funerals and for me it's not just food funerals it's also like food and drinking funerals <laughs> I feel like you know after next month I'm not gonna be able to drink or eat I don't know in my mind I feel like ever again but you know I, I know because of watching your YouTube videos that you do eat and um, you, know, you can still eat good stuff smaller portions and over time you know you can partake in some good things but um, I just feel like there's starting to be a list in my head of all the things that I want to eat or you know do before before my surgery um, you know like uh, yesterday I went down a little sports bar and watched uh, some playoff football I was there I don't know maybe two hours and found myself wanting to push it a little bit and you know have a couple of shots and drink beers with some guy with the guys and um you know I I don't know it's like part of me feels like this is the last time I can do this so you know last night went to the to the wife's parents and uh had dinner and she made uh it was like a Stouffer's lasagna with um I think we had a salad with it but I found myself ah you know that, that one piece wasn't enough let me get another piece because this might be you know some of the last time I have a, a lasagna so I hadn't really eaten much that day anyway so just made my calories for the day but it just uh, I, I don't know I wanted to vent a little bit about my little food funerals like um, I know for a fact there's this tri-tip sandwich I have to have um, it's at this restaurant there's actually a couple of them uh, three different ones one's in Fresno where I used to live in fact the two that are, that are close to me now within a short drive 15 minutes and then one's an hour we go there a few times a year and get a tri-tip sandwich and I, I just, just love it in fact we still call it the name of what it was the restaurant was called in Fresno where we lived for a long time that's how much we enjoyed it so but I'm gonna have to do that I'm gonna have to we're gonna have to make a trip uh, Cambria is one place that has it usually it's less busy there so we'll drive an hour just make a drive out of it go there and go down to the beach after that let Gavin play at this little beach that's by there and or my son his name's Gavin but um I don't know. It's just uh, it's coming over me. I, I feel like I'm having to harness it down and not let it get to me that um, I got to eat all these things or I got to, you know, do these things. But yeah, I'm going to have to do that tri-tip sandwich. One thing I have going on for sure is in early February, so just not too far from now, a few weeks, um, I'm going to be going to Vegas. Just me and the wife, we're going to, her mom's going to watch our son. We're going to go and have a kind of a, like a last hurrah we're gonna eat some good food we're gonna we're gonna drink some uh, I'm sure we're gonna have some drinks I'm gonna really enjoy it because I feel like that's uh, that's it but I'm gonna let myself enjoy that that'll be fun that's Las Vegas that's uh, February 8th to 10th um, looking forward to that that'll be fun I haven't been to Vegas in years five years I've uh, been to Reno a couple years a few years ago before I lived in Southern Oregon But, um, yeah, I haven't been to Vegas, so that'll be a good time. I mean, we'll just, we'll keep it pretty, pretty low key, probably see a show. And, you know, I don't know. Who knows? Maybe we'll have a lot of fun. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, few food funerals, um, drinking funerals. That's what I'm, that's what, I mean, I'm a busy guy, so I don't have a lot of time to dwell on these kind of things. I, between work full time and, and, raising a little boy uh, trying to you know 
keep up with uh, any kind of house maintenance and be a decent husband. You know, it takes up a lot of my, a lot of my time. But um, I notice when uh, something I want to do is eat some good food. And uh, but I can't. I mean, I I can't just do that every day. Like every day, I'm gonna like it used to be when I had my son for the day off. He liked being burritos, and so I would go to this restaurant that um, it's a Mexican restaurant that does have a drive through and uh, it was easy when my son was little because I didn't have to get him out of the car seat and all that even though he still had a car seat but he's not as it's not as hard he can he's a little more uh, manageable but um, I'll drive through there and I'll get myself a carne asada burrito which is uh, for you people that don't live in California maybe you don't know what that sounds like that's like steak chopped up and lots of good stuff and a burrito with a huge tortilla of course uh, I would go get that I don't have any real desire to do that, but that just gives you an idea of what I would do. Right now, I actually have a this pre um, this tilapia in the oven that you buy in a package, and it's got seasonings on top, and you bake it for like 27 minutes. Um, I think I mentioned it before. I took a picture, but I haven't shown it yet of what the box looked like. I got a salmon and a tilapia, but that's what I'm going to have. And you know, I just had a, a smoothie so far today, so. I'm not rushing out to do these things, but it's just crazy how this, uh, you know, knowing that my life's going to change in a month and everything's going to be so different. I um, catch myself wanting to just go and, you know, have drinks, have food, be merry. <laughs> Instead, my mindset's going to be on, you know, afterwards, after the surgery, losing weight, eating what I'm supposed to, getting my protein in getting my exercise in um, that's what life's gonna be like working being productive oh. that's another thing I want to talk about like my one of my biggest concerns is uh, being able to get back to work I'm gonna take two weeks I'm gonna give myself two weeks no ifs ands or buts um, but I'm hoping like after those two weeks I'll be able to go back I mentioned you guys before I work at a bank so I sit at a desk I do I have to get up a little bit here and there but obviously it's more and less a desk job and um, you know I'd like to be able to get back I kind of have a demanding somewhat high stress job and uh, I'd like to be able to get back at it and not miss too much and not use too much of my vacation time <laughs> so later in the year I might be able to use some and have fun with my lighter lighter body um, but that's a concern is getting back to work and you know how is how are the people I work with and I think it's gonna help me I think it's gonna help me the have more energy, be more confident. You know, I might have a sales driven kind of uh, position. And um, I need to be able to do that. I need to be able to feel good, feel healthy. I mean, I'm pretty confident, even though I'm, you know, I'm heavier, I'm pretty confident, especially in my ability to do my job. But um, when it comes down to, uh, you know, I think that, I think when it comes down to promotions and things like, things like that, I think there are some stereotypes and some uh, some prejudices against some bias against overweight people. I mean, there's been tons of studies. I've seen video documentaries on like NBC, even where they have uh, they take a an attractive girl or guy and put him in a, for a job interview, and take a less attractive guy or girl and put him in, and you can see who gets the better feedback, who gets the job, that kind of thing. So, I mean, that's pretty well documented. But I think that it's too bad that people like us that uh, you know gain weight for whatever reason um, get put like in a little bit of a box that we're lazy that we don't we're not intelligent people that we don't um, have the will or discipline to do the things we need to do and um, for whatever reason we're put in a position where we have an uphill battle I think where some people have it easy I've got friends I mean, I've always, I noticed Phil mentioned normies, normies, people that are normal because they can just eat whatever they want. They don't have to think about it every day worrying, you know, am I, am I gaining, am I losing? And it's true. I grew up with a lot of friends that were like that. They could eat, you know, I'd, we'd have drinks together. We'd have food together. We'd have big barbecues and they're eating the same food or eating more than me, but yet I'm gaining weight and they're not. If I stop going to the gym, I gain weight. They stop going to the gym, they just get skinnier and less muscle. 
I don't know where how that turns out to be fair, but you know, like me, like many of you, our genetics aren't really set up for um, set up for this. I heard I heard it explained one time that us bigger people, our bodies are more efficient with a small amount of food. We can take a small amount of food and be efficient with that because we don't need a lot. The rest that we eat, we store, and um, which sounds like a positive thing, but you know, obviously, it's been a negative thing. It's, my weight's impacted me in so many negative ways. Um, it's probably to the point that got me down this road where I have to have uh, take a step to have surgery, which uh, is coming up next month. But so that's it. I mean, the biggest thing too, I think, losing the weight and for the job and being productive, because my work is a big part of part of my life. Uh, unfortunately, um, I'm always been with someone who lives works to live and not lives to work so uh, I do it to make a living and uh, survive and pay the bills but um, it's important that I get I get there and I'm productive I, I do my job well I stand out at what I do but I think a big part of what's hurt me for last probably 10 years is that my sleep apnea my sleep apnea and um, I just, it's hard I mean I may sleep seven, eight hours, but I probably am only, even with my sleep, even with my CPAP, which is actually a BiPAP machine, I'm probably only getting, you know, 60% of that as decent, real, legit, good sleep. Um, so, it's just not, not great sleep. Like, I'll get tired early in the day. It'll be 2, 2.30, 3 o'clock, and somehow I'll hit a wall or I crash. I don't drink coffee at all. I don't drink any real legit caffeine. If my soda of choice, which I haven't drank in since in a while, I've had a couple along this last 40 from the last couple months, but is Sprite Zero, which has no caffeine anyway. But um, So I don't really drink caffeine. I rely on a natural. I do water at work. So I rely on like a natural energy um, situation. So, I just don't like the crash. If I drink a bunch of coffee, I crash. And I don't, I'm sure many of you that are listening to me right now drink coffee and enjoy it. It's fun. And my wife's an addict. She goes to Starbucks almost every day. So, <laughs> I, I know the feeling. But, um, but yeah, the, the sleep bag, once I get that down, even if I have to keep using the machine, I think if, if I'm 50 to 80 pounds, 100 pounds lighter, that's going to be much, I'm going to get much better sleep. Uh, my goal. The big one of the biggest goals I have is to get to a point where I don't need that machine anymore. And I know if I get to low 200s, I won't need that machine. Won't need it. Never needed it till I got to about 260. Um, that's when I started needing it. But if I get to two, my goal is kind of 205. Um, 205 is a place where I was my um, freshman year in college, where I feel like I was in freshman sophomore, where I feel like I was in the best shape of my life. I had muscle. On my right before my senior year, I got down to 182, um, which was uh, you know people thought I was almost being a chubby kid and got to 182. At, I was almost probably almost six foot then, which I am now. Um, they felt like that was. Uh, I remember like my mom saying I was too thin, which I was. I mean 182 doesn't sound that thin for a six foot person. The BMI probably says 165 or something crazy, which I don't even try to focus on the BMI but um yeah so the sleep apnea will be huge um I think that uh I would like to be able to just run like really really run I walk a lot like I walk a lot but I'd like to be able to run where I not worried about my knee my knee I have a right my right knee gets sore um kind of afraid to try to explode off of it um, I have a lower back that was the main corporate to me gradually lower back issue that I started in high school and got worse in college and it was kind of like the more I exercised the more my lower back would spasm and have pain and um, you know I, I took pain meds for that for a while for years off and on when it would flare up I'd take Vicodin amongst other things um, but I haven't taken Vicodin in over a year um, just kind of 
I try to focus on physical therapy and uh, every morning I have stretches I do throughout the day I have stretches I do for my lower back and hamstrings and um, but I'd love for the lower back and the knee to have less pain on it. My um went to a knee specialist last year here here in town and, and he said that um he was telling me like for example going up the stairs to get up to his, his little office, you every something like every pound you have adds like ten pounds of pressure on your knees. So if I could lose ten pounds it would take off a lot of pressure on me as you're stepping upstairs. Um, I believe it. I mean, just losing you know almost twenty pounds over the last couple of months, I feel much more mobile. And you know, imagine another twenty, another twenty, hundred. So anyway, I'm excited about the weight loss. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm a little, I'm scared, I'm nervous about the the surgery, but I'm so ready for it. I'm so ready for it that um. Farley, it by far outweighs the fear. I'm ready. Anyway, kind of getting serious here. This is a little more serious um, conversation than I usually have. A little bit venting. Um, but I know many people are probably in the same boat where they realize this whole thing's happening. It's happening to me next month, and I'm not going to let myself turn back. I'm not, I don't care. Nothing's going to stop me. I have to be a little bit selfish in this and not let anything stop me. And my manager at work, she's not going to like it when I tell her that I have to leave for two weeks and um, do this. But she's going to have to understand that you know my health is a major concern of mine. And, and sh I mean, it should be of hers in the long run. If I'm healthier, I'm going to work. I'm going to do better. So um, yeah, I don't think there's anything else I, I want to say. It's just that. Um, Food, funeral, they're not all going to die, but in my head, naturally, I feel like I need to, it's a last hurrah, it's a last hurrah, last time to eat, last time to drink, so hopefully I can just hold on till Vegas and get that out of my system and, uh, and you know, be a good boy, do the right thing, eating wise and health wise, um, so anyways, I'm going to sign off here, guys. Thanks for uh, tuning in, and I really appreciate all your support. Thanks.